Happy Friday, folks. It's that time again. We're here for Nudge Coach Happy Hour. We got Matt Gamble on the line. I'm Phil Bean. Um, and we're back on March 19th. Hope everybody is having a good March so far. And another crazy week in Nudge Land, as usual, Mac, wouldn't you say? Yes, and we are back. Too bad it's not St. Patty's Day. I think that would have been a... We should have done a St. Patty's Day episode. For anyone <sighs> listening... For anyone listening, we'll just use your imagination. We're dressed up in green. We're all we're all themed. Not the case, I guess. Not not the, but yes, another crazy week in Edgeland. Leprechauns on the shelves. We yeah, we got to get more festive for sure. We'll work on that, yeah, guys. Um, maybe when we're recording more than one episode a week, we'll we'll it'll be easier to fit in the hit, holiday. Hit the holidays. We'll, yeah. we'll try to hit the holidays. <laughs> Fridays and holidays. No, Fridays and holidays. Hour. I like it. I like it. it <laughs> probably correlates with happy hour a little bit better anyway. I suppose so. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe one day we'll record one at happy hour again and not be drinking coffee. Yeah. Yeah. But to your point, in- interesting week. And I really like the topic we're jumping into. Um, I will also say interesting week from a standpoint of talk to a lot of different types of coaching businesses this week. Um, there you go. So, just real quick, just to kind of, in anyone listening, just to kind of give you the sense of like how the coaching world is growing, um, had multiple leadership coaching businesses come in this week that I was talking to. So one of our team members is out on maternity leave. Shout out to Katie. Hope she's doing okay. Um, and, and Wells. And Wells. And Wells. That's the baby, baby Wells. Yep. New baby Wells. Um, so, you know, I've had a chance to kind of hop into more intro calls. So it's really interesting to kind of hear what people are up to, who these groups are multiple leadership coaches, a uh, company focus on mood coaching, which I thought was really interesting. Um, You know, still get, you know, groups doing coaching in corporate settings in different ways, whether it's health-based or not. Um, Yeah. It's just the, the different types of coaching that I'm encountering at this point is just pretty phenomenal in different models. So kudos to everyone out there who's doing something interesting in the coaching world. That seems like pick everyone's picked up their game in 2021. That's right. It's all happening. We've been uh, we've been prognosticating about this, theorizing that this was coming, and it's nice to see it uh, come to fruition right before our eyes. Yep, we're seeing like coaches, coaches for coaches, and it's like coaches for coaches of coaches. <laughs> so it's just like new types of coaching for coaching. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Wheel, but, wheels within wheels, folks. Yep, good way to put it. But yeah, no, uh, I, the topic today. Yeah, jump into this. I think it's really interesting. Yeah. So we. In working with all these different types of coaches um, and coaching businesses coming in, uh, we're noticing trends. You know, we we often start kind of plugging in when uh, companies or businesses or even individual coaches are starting to face some scaling issues, um, or at least there are a lot of questions around that topic for kind of the programming that they're either building out or have built out and want to take to the next level. Mm-hmm. And just at a high level. I wanted to talk today about and diving into a little bit kind of the different ways that maybe a one-on-one coaching business will scale versus like a group coaching business will scale and kind of what that looks like through the process, because we keep seeing this as we work with more people, but they're vastly different journeys, but there are a lot of similarities involved. So this should be a little bit of putting out there in front of you all, there's more than one way to skin this cat, grow Mm -hmm. a a coaching business from the ground up and scale it as big as you want to, to be honest. There's more than one way to do that. In fact, we're going to go through two ways today. (laughs) Two ways. And these are the ways we are just encountering. Let me be the first to say too, this is just, hey, ear to the ground, what we're kind of what we're hearing, what we're seeing. Um, Because I I do think they typically fall into two buckets. Yep, yep, yep. These are easy, broad categories for us to use. Yep. Obviously, there will be a mishmash. Um, and, you know, with, with either one, you can kind of benefit from the scaling opportunities of the other one. But mm-hmm. let's dive into it. Stop teasing it. Um, we want to start. First, the first one, um, maybe the most obvious to most folks who would be listening to this, is you build out your one on one coaching, you're working with clients, you map your uh, workflow methodology and your coaching process really well. You see that it's prof- profitable. And then you basically hire, train, and repeat. Hire, train, repeat, hire, train, repeat, mm-hmm. hire, train, repeat. That's one one version. I'm going to so, call this the on-point model. The Brittany on was on our point. podcast, so I don't mind kind of mentioning them. I think they have done this incredibly well. 
mm-hmm. and have it very you know systematized, um, very predictable in terms of how they grow their company, like model for people that want to go that direction. Yep. We're maybe going too fast because that is literally the key to this, to scaling in that model is documenting, nailing down the methodology, communicating the workflow, um, how you work with, with clients. What else goes into that? I mean, there's, there's, it's, it's really very rinse and repeat. So you have to get what you're repeating, right? Absolutely. I think that's the, I would call that the more organic way to grow that I feel like I see typically is a Mm -hmm. coach says, Hey, I'm feeling strain. Um, I think they're, you know, yeah, they may be using systems to try to help scale themselves a little bit, but I think I tend to see, they get to a point where they say, Hey, look, that next client has put me to the point I need to bring in, you know, I'm finally getting the point I need to divvy up this client list a little bit. I, and I know a coach, my friend over here who's a coach. So I'm going to bring he or she in to help coach this, this pool of clients. I think that is what most people traditionally have done. I'd say that's kind of where we were over the past 10 years. I think we're now starting to see a little bit more of the, of the kind of second bucket we're going to touch on, which we don't need to transition yet. I just kind of mentioned that. No, I think you're right. I think, you know, we still see it more, I would say. And I'd be interested to see if you're experiencing this the same way, but would you say that very often the kind of first hire or the second coach comes too late and then like comes very late in the process? Like the, the person who has built a great program and is working with clients really effectively goes like beyond strain before they try to expand a lot of times Uh, for sure i mean i i we work with so many partners i can think of and in some some or even some of our white label partners that just have really you know really grown and have a great offering and maybe have dozens of clients and yeah i think when you use something like a like a nudge coach or or coaching platform you you do have that opportunity to manage more people efficiently and effectively but it's yeah. I mean, I feel like it's a similar story. Like they, they come to the zoom calls and you can tell they didn't get a ton of sleep because they were yep. trying to coach Hairs everybody. In yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and we say this in like the most like loving, like practical way. I mean, we're the same way working, working on a, you know, startup. Um, but it's, you can tell there's definitely, they, they hit that threshold where they say like, this is not sustainable anymore. Yeah. And I think the first thought is to say, Hey, I've already incorporated systems now is the time to bring in that next person. And I think when you go, and I think when you, you make, take that step, you essentially go down the path of, I'd say what this first bucket is of what I said is kind of the on point model. You say, Hey, look, let me, you know, focus on process and systems so I can bring in that next person to kind of bring them up to speed with what I do. And then just have kind of more of me basically replicating yourself. Yeah. What I see a lot in, when I say a lot, I'm narrowing this down to, you know, a certain number of conversations I'm having. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying this is like a a thousand coach in this, in this bucket study or anything, but from my, my conversations is it's interesting that it, it almost, it almost feels too daunting and overwhelming to take the step of really documenting process because at this point where you're starting to get to this point, all your hours feel like they're dedicated to like, actual coaching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm finding that sometimes coaches have a really hard time taking a step back and starting to document, um, process methodology and prepare mm-hmm. for what maybe that next step would be because, well, there could be a lot of reasons for it, I'm sure. And I, I wonder if any of the folks out there listening to this or experiencing any of these, but, um, maybe you never really thought you were going to scale this thing. Um, mm, you, were, yeah. you were just like, Hey, I just really, I coaching is my passion. I love doing it. Um, I know I have this great program. I just want to get it out there and, you know, fast forward a year and you mm-hmm. have more clients than you know what to do with. And you're pulling your hair out. Um, that's something that I think can totally happen. And then at that point, I think you have a really interesting conversation with yourself to have, Yeah, which is, do I want to be a coach or do I want to run a business? (laughs) So true. So true. And I, yeah, cause I, and I think that's, that definitely ties into that, that first bucket, the on point model, as I'm calling it. Um, Cause I think it gets to a point where you start as a coach 
as you bring on, you know, replicating yourself multiple times, you can get to a point where you say, Hey, I don't need to work with clients anymore. And it, I think it all comes to what you want to build. And I think that to your point, that's probably the first question to ask yourself, because I know plenty of people that still coach and it's not necessarily full time. They just Mm -hmm. enjoy working with people. I mean, that's essentially what a lot of people do consulting. You know, they just maybe even do it a fraction of the time they consult with people on the side. I mean, that essentially the same thing. So yeah, I think you, you get to a point of figuring out what type of business you really want to grow. Is it just kind of a side hustle or something that you want to do? Um, or do you want to actually grow a big business from it? And you can, I mean, this day and age, geez, I, I still think we're getting to a point in time where everyone is going to be working with some type of coach and they may not all be using the term coach, but you know, whether it's a coach for athletics, a coach for fitness, a coach for nutrition, a coach for performance, whatever it is, I just think we're getting to the point. Everyone's going to be relying on some type of professional. Yep. And let me play a mindset coach for a minute. It's a, it's a mindset shift. If you're going to decide that, Hey, you're going to run the business. Um, and you know, mm. you, you're not, it, it's a shift from going from coach to kind of yeah. running the business, uh, coach to manager, whatever that is. And the shift is how you're going to manage your time and a lot of other things. So um, it really is kind of an intent, intentional decision that has to be made. And that's why I think that whole mindset shift takes time for people. That's, that's my theory for like why it takes so much time often for that one coach to hi- bring on second coach yeah. is just because it, it, like, it, it requires this whole shift in mindset, a commitment of certain hours of the day to actually do the kind of work on the business rather than in the business stuff of saying, okay, this is my methodology that I just naturally do. What does it look like? What needs to be in front of someone for them to learn how to do it and incorporate it as, mm-hmm. as I have uh, started thinking about those things. What systems am I using? How would I get someone set up? All of these kind of mm-hmm. uh, administrative bits and pieces that you need to get into when you're bringing on the second coach can often be easier when we're talking about the third and the fourth. It definitely gets easier faster yeah. and you'll, you know, you'll see the threshold coming where, you know, maybe you and second coach are getting strained or you have just kind of started moving more and more of your time over to the managerial administrative stuff. And you identify ahead of time, you start to get better and better at it as you, as you grow um, saying, all right, you know, it's time, it's time to start looking for number three. We have a few clients that they can get started with now. And we're uh, seeming to have success, get one door and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Co- Coaching is interesting the way it, I think about if you're going to hire someone, you know, like we've recently hired some people, um, you know, I think a lot of positions, you know, when you, you look for certain skill sets, coaching is a little bit interesting in the way where I think each coach has their own kind of flavor, their own methodology in a way that finding someone that really aligns with your coaching methodology makes that a lot more complicated than, for instance, going out and just hiring somebody for you know, I think a certain role in a company, I think that's a very, especially the first, because, you know, going from one to two people within a company is a huge jump because you're going from, Hey, I've got everything in my mind. You know, it's all my systems, my processes. It's all like, it's all up here. I'm pointing to my head, by the way, for anyone that can't see me. (laughs) Um, It's all up here. So it's one of those things where going from, from one to two, you have to start figuring out how do you communicate that how do you train? How do you educate? Um, how do you have oversight? And then going from two to three, I think you it, it's going to get, you know, there'll be a marginal improvement and it'll be a little bit simpler with each new person you bring on. But yeah, I think it's not the same as just hiring for a position. And I think that is a very, it's a, it's a difficult thing, but I think once you get past the first one, it gets a lot easier. And I think companies like OnPoint and some others we've wor- we work with that I can think of right now that do have teams figure that out they they really define to your point the processes their systems and now can really easily bring in a new coach educate them on who they are what they do their their methodology and get them up and running yeah that's you make such a good point about that second person being so critical and it's it's interesting but you're right i think it's it's so much a culture fit thing Mm -hmm. like which is a weird thing to say for two people right but you have to mesh so well when it's coaching that we're talking about. Um, yeah. That's, that's really good point. I mean, you know, we, as a smallish company, um, 
our culture fit is pretty going to be pretty yeah. important every hire we make, but probably much more so even to someone who's going to be working, representing the brand, working hands on with clients, um, which may even be your personal, yeah. brand, by the way, representing that brand, mm-hmm. but working hands on with clients. You need to feel comfortable with that person that they reflect you well for sure. Yeah, I think in a service based company, it's more difficult because of that. I mean, I think you know you you probably see the same thing with. Um, I think consulting companies or I think even probably like law practices or, or doctor's offices probably deal with the same thing when you're hiring that type of professional. Um, so definitely interesting. So that's kind of that first bucket. Um, second bucket, I think the second bucket's interesting because I made a comment earlier about kind of the last 10 years. I think we're saying, I I actually think we're starting to see maybe, I don't want to even say a shift, but I think we're starting to see more interest than there was previously in this second bucket. However, I'd still say this is probably the the minority of the two. Yeah, yeah. And these feel like almost more like kind of startups, you know, um, a yeah. lot of times that are trying to kind of, I would call this scaling vertically, even though that might not be technically the right term. But what I mean by that is like, you know, when you're hiring more people, you're kind of hiring out another person, another person, another person, copy paste the process and you're kind of expanding. I'm calling that horizontally. Mm-hmm. But when you're, trying to scale a program by, you know, constantly refining the process, the workflow, automate, adding automation so that you can service more people in the same program with the same kind of actual human backing. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the second bucket and we're absolutely seeing it more and more. I, I just think that's more of a vertical alignment in my brain because I see one coach kind of being able to manage a, a huge tower of humans, um, and work them through workflows. But interestingly, I think mm-hmm. when I was kind of wrapping my brain about this right before we jumped on, um, was is kind of the idea that the beginning for both of these seems really similar to me. Like you have to refine and hone in the program either way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to define what it is, what you're doing, how you're going to do it. Yeah. Whether, you know, even, Yes, yeah, your point. Because you're, you're either going to need that to educate the next person coming in, or you're going to need to have a benchmark that you can optimize moving forward. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're either, you know, training yourself and your systems more and more, or you're, you know, setting yourself up to train mm-hmm. additional people. Um, but either way, and this is, I think, a great representation of one of the, the favored Mac-isms, um, which is do things that don't scale first, right? Because like, if you don't have the fundamental core program that is proven effective that you've, you've used effectively, no matter whether you want to scale this way or this way, I'm pointing for all of you listening to the podcast. <laughs> it's really like a shameless plug for the YouTube of like, hey, you, can, you get to see us pointing. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you about this new, new website called YouTube.com, yeah. folks. <laughs> Either way, though, you need to hone in this core program mm-hmm. and then you can maybe decide at that point, okay, this is something that I can automate yeah. aspects of and try to scale this way or I can uh, hire people. The, the other thing to think about, I'm thinking about too, though, is also the type of offering it is. Because for instance, if you were someone that likes working incredibly hands-on with a client, I don't know if the second bucket is really something you're going to be able to do. Um, which is this idea of creating something that's highly scalable. Yeah. Um, I, I think it works works really well for some of the people that, and I think about some of the initiatives we're working on right now, some coaches that are managing hundreds or even thousands of people. And what they're doing is a lot of automated content delivery with the asynchronous messaging, um, video, things that scale well, but are still very humanized. And I think that's where you have to really rely on systems in processes. You can still bring people on. So that's one thing too. I think about that initiative we're working on overseas right now that, um, you know, he's actually got a team that helps him with some of the communication and in mm-hmm. the system. So it's, it's, you know, you're still growing something highly scalable, but you're not necessarily having to hire coaches to do coaching. It's more of Such at that point, you're growing, point. you're growing a team to, continue to improve your scalability of, you know, content creation, um, you know, content delivery, things like that. Um, you, you're thinking more about kind of operators and virtual assistants, teams like that versus actual coaches. 
Right. That's such a good point. It's almost, yeah. Yeah. The ops, you're growing the ops and not the talent. Almost. Yeah. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Ops versus um, talent. Maybe that's how we should, we should look at it. Really interesting. Um, yeah. So, and there's, you know, a, a whole different set of pitfalls that I think, you know, can, you can run into there. I, I think we talk about this new kind of emerging bucket um, a decent amount just because it's kind of a little bit more obviously what kind of an app enables, you know, with, with our platform, it's mm -hmm. easy for us to have this conversation because we're saying stuff like, Oh yeah, you can build out sequences of content, um, scheduling them out. They go right through the app. That's great. Um, but you know, both are served for sure mm -hmm. by kind of online coaching tools, um, systems, you know, like, Calendly, just making yeah. it easier to schedule calls with each of your team members, all all things like that um, will create man create create kind of managerial efficiencies for you and let you scale even as a team better. Um, mm -hmm. So, a lot of stuff, and you know we've seen so for this the second group that's scaling more um, through these through systems, um, we're seeing a lot of these these people who are more interested in it now, I think this kind of uptick of this interest mm -hmm. is a lot of these kind of newer coaching uh, areas or niches that are coming our way who may be coming from something a little <laughs> bit more like uh, creating online courses or trying to deliver their content that way before uh, they kind of realize that something that looks a little more like coaching is what they want to be doing. But are you, mm -hmm. you're seeing some of that too. Yeah, I, I think it also too depends on for you, you definitely have to know your clientele. So like I th I'm thinking about those people that are coaching and I know we even work with some of these that they say, hey, look, I'm getting a lot of my clients from I'm just going to say Instagram or I'm getting a lot of clients from some kind of online resource um, and, they're, and they're maybe catering to people that are used to consuming content in very scalable ways. Um, I think that's where that second bucket can really be attractive is when you're trying, you know, it, it, for instance, if you were catering to an older demographic, that's maybe more used to in-person or one-to-one, -one, that second model may not work as well. But I think, you know, you, I know you work with some of these people as well. Um, some we, we work with that may be getting their, their clients and leads from something like Instagram or their podcast or something like that. It, it seems like it's a really easy transition to do kind of a, I don't want to call it the one person show, but, but more of the, along the lines of that highly scalable offering where yeah, it's yeah. kind of a complement to the, the content and the resources that kind of brought them in to begin with. Um, so I, I, I don't know, that's just kind of an observation I've had is thinking about the people that have gone that direction. It seems like they come from the world more of like, I, maybe they're influencers, but maybe they have more of that mindset than the traditional kind of coach mold, I'd say. But that's just kind of an observation of what I'm seeing. Yeah, and I, I think it speaks to, you know, we've talked about this before where um, to, you know, really have a honed in model, your marketing has mm -hmm. to align with the product you're delivering or the service yeah. you're delivering, right? Um, and so, you know, we work with coaches who are fortunate enough to have nailed the Facebook mm -hmm. ads thing, for example or yep. some type of advertising channel like that, where they're able to hit people at scale and convert them at a high rate. Um, yep. Yes, there are some people out there who do pull that off, by the way. Um, not for everybody, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have the type of subject matter that they're working uh, with clients on and the, you know, the type of programming and model that works for that type of thing, that type of scale. So they, mm -hmm. their workflow is going to look a little different. You know, it's going to be the see an ad through Facebook, maybe retarget those people who see that ad through Facebook, hit them a couple mm -hmm. times, get them to a page where you have kind of a low barrier to entry lead capture that gets people into a, maybe a free challenge, something like that converts them there from there to a paid offering. Whereas, you know, the scaling one-to-one -one coaching side, you're probably doing more of the getting more referrals. You're just ramping mm -hmm. up more of these traditional <laughs> kind of growth methods, which this gets to a higher level point, which is if you're going to scale, no matter what you need to be able to get more clients in the door, obviously yep. you're, you're experiencing that problem, hopefully. And that's when, you know, um, so 
on the one-to-one side, that looks more like the traditional things that you've probably seen in coaching, getting referrals from partners who you work Mm -hmm. with. So maybe you're um, in health coaching and you get referrals from physicians locally, all that kind of good stuff. Um, And yeah, referrals from, from clients who maybe go to your webpage and book a free consult. And that's the workflow because you want to have that first consult because obviously it's a very one-to-one human oriented coaching business that you're scaling. That's a great aligned kind of way to grow that business. So it's a great thing to consider um, Mm. that as you're, as you're kind of planning to scale is does your kind of marketing and your kind of early customer journey align with what you're actually delivering on the back end? Yeah. And that's what we were talking a little bit last week too, is that idea of kind of consistency. So if you're, you know, engaging people one way and all of your kind of pre-sale activities don't come at them with something completely different once you start, you know, cause they, I think you're, you're probably a, tr- the way you're engaging with people early on may work really well for them, you know, maybe email, but then you start engaging them in a totally different way afterwards. So just thinking about kind of continuity of your, of your kind of messaging and, and the way in which you're even reaching people. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Subject matter wise is actually a good thing can, to consider. Obviously if you're coaching people through something really, really complex, mm-hmm. then you're probably going to be best served to plan out everything as if you're scaling a one-to-one coaching model that just requires more people to be hands-on and help them through kind of, you know, this is a lot of the kind of Mm -hmm. nutrition, especially stuff, people with dietary issues who are trying to identify them and you get into a whole world of doing complex things like an elimination diet Yeah, um, yeah. versus versus Mm -hmm. just simply, you know, you obviously Mm -hmm. constantly people are advertised simple weight loss programs, right? those are two complexity wise, two totally different mm-hmm. things. And you see the, you know, the weight, watch, traditional like weight watchers type stuff delivered at scale versus, yeah. you know, very deep kind of identify hard to identify issues uh, through, through very hands-on coaching. Those are examples of two different models based on subject matter, I'd say. One, one thing I've seen actually too, which is kind of an interesting blend of the two, just in terms of kind of a hybrid to throw a little bit of a wrench into this whole episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen a few really scalable offerings that, there's kind of one point in the coaching interaction that is personalized. Um, And I think about some that deal with kind of nutrition based programming is they have all of their content mapped out in, in our platform. Maybe it's, they have a sequence of cards that'll be delivered over, you know, some period of time, six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is. But what they've done is in the first, you know, say day or two, one of the steps in the whole process is getting a person to fill something out, some kind of form, Mm-hmm. that allows them to maybe put together some kind of custom meal plan for the person. So you're, you're, that's the kind of personalized component yeah, of yeah. it. And so all of the content moving forward for them is still relevant. It's still automated. They don't have to put new content in there. That person now just knows their numbers may be slightly different, or now they know what their numbers are in terms of what their nutritional needs are. So that it makes that automated programming feel a lot more specific to them. So that's kind of one thing we're seeing a little bit too, is like the whole thing is still very automated in a lot of ways. However, there's maybe one point that coach or coaching team is doing some manual calculation for the new users coming in just to kind of make sure nutritionally they've got their numbers. Um, So I'm seeing stuff like that too, which is I think kind of a nice hybrid of the two. It's a really good point. And I'm glad we're kind of rounding to that at the end because right, there's only so many models are going to be like a pure form of, you know, Hey, scale this as much as possible and and get a a bajillion people through this one program developed by this one person versus, you know, more hands-on scale. But Mm -hmm. in in reality, if you picture this, like I've been talking about it, kind of a vertical and a horizontal. So uh, saying, you know, scaling the program itself so they can reach a, a bajillion people and pump a bajillion people through it is the vertical up and, adding coaches is the horizontal, the Mm x-axis to the right. By scaling, we just mean you're going up into the right somehow. Some combination of the two, right? Um, So if you, your first step is to make the program itself more scalable, that's great. You have all the, all the tools in, in the the toolkit to just Mm -hmm. go ahead and start refining and working on those workflows. And then maybe you, you identify a point at which you're like, okay, this is pretty scalable. I'm really profitable at this. Why don't I just duplicate this on another coach and see if we can scale it then that way as well. Um, this, there's always those opportunities. Mm-hmm. 
definitely not a binary thing. It's not this or that. There's there's always going to be kind of hybrid approaches and kind of different flavors of it. But I think that's just an interesting example of maybe creative ways in which you kind of take bits and pieces of both to kind of create what you feel like is going to be the best fit for you. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. And, and if you listen to us a lot, you're probably thinking, well, you guys have talked about this in terms of like, you have your primary program, which may be mm-hmm. very one-on-one. And then you, you want, you've been telling me to make sure yeah. that I always have somewhere for them to go afterwards. It's more scalable. That's the membership model. That's more. Yeah. Repeat systems, right? Repeat systems. Yeah. I, I think it's, and hopefully most people have now done some kind of like maintenance plan or membership. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we've been talking about it enough. Hopefully that's something people are doing, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it'll be interesting to see as we move forward. Like I said, I feel like the first bucket was one we were seeing a lot of early on in the second bucket was like I said, not certainly not the majority. I definitely feel like we're seeing more now where individual coaches are starting to explore that direction than they were previously versus just always assuming once you get to X number of clients, you bring on another coach. Yep. I think we're now starting to see maybe just where technology is. You don't have to think that way. You can think a little bit differently. Not to say that multi-coach model is not the right fit for you. I'm just saying in general. Yeah, and I think there's two sides of it, right? There's the just zooming out and looking at the industry as a whole. I mm-hmm. just feel like coaches and across disciplines, this varies a little bit too, but are as a whole becoming a hell of a lot more tech savvy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they started behind a lot of other sectors just to, to broadly paint with the, the broadest mm-hmm. possible brush. But, and this is maybe some of our learned experience by starting more in kind of the health and even, yeah. even healthcare realm, uh, where that is definitely true. Um, you know, especially where, you know, it just aligns with sort of values, right? It's very holistic approach, very mm-hmm. back to nature, a lot of, a lot of stuff like that, where these people might not spend a ton of time with te- technology day to day or really believe in it as much until they see a direct use for it. That's going to positively impact lives. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, whereas we are seeing now more and more of the business coaching and the life coaching and the, um, you know, leadership coaching and, you know, even something like gamers who are obviously plugged in all the time, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. someone coaching yeah. gamers is obviously going to be very tech savvy. <laughs> Um, yeah, so esports shift. coaching. We've seen it all. We've seen it all at this point. Yep. Well, it's why we're never bored, Mac, and why we can have a standing Friday call that we record, that we don't plan, and that we can always talk yep. touch on something different. <laughs> that is a good reminder for everybody. Phil and I typically come into this by just looking at our calendars and reflecting back on what happened this week. Yep. Very, very, you know, there's no scripting. Well, obviously, you listen to us and you're like, there's no way these guys script. Um, but yeah, so we'll have to see what next week brings, but I think there's, you know, like I said, now, uh, as I'm getting more involved in some of the intro calls, I'm starting to see a lot, you know, get, you know, get encounter a lot of different people each week. So it's kind of fun to reflect back, but I guess it's that time for the Instagram live, Instagram live, Instagram live, live, live. um, and, and if you're thinking, man, I really like Instagram lives. Um, Mac's Instagram is Mac, M-A-C underscore Gamble, G-A-M-B-I-L-L. You can catch his Instagram lives every Friday around 9. It's around 945-ish. 9.45 a.m. Eastern time. So you should, we expect you to be waiting by your phone or device of some kind. Um, just waiting for that that face, that beautiful mug of Mac to pop up to the top and say, Mac Gamble's going live and, and going tap live. in and feel free to make fun of us as we go through that. <laughs> but please hop on there to make fun of us just so we can, we can see you and, and have a conversation. And so she just I, notes, we had, we had a, we had a pretty talkative bunch last week. So it'll be exciting to hop on. If you're going to talk trash, at least do it on our Instagram live publicly. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I prefer to be embarrassed publicly. So, yes, um, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, another week in Nudge World. We did it. We did it. So, awesome. I guess we'll see you all next week. Yep. Nudge Coach Happy Hour on your favorite podcast app on this site called youtube.com as well. Look out for that. We'll see you next time, guys. <laughs>